All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Shivai, and I'll just quickly just cross check if everything is fine. All right. I think we are good to go. It's our uh, time. So, welcome everyone to Hyperledger uh, Global Forum. This time, it's a virtual experience. Unfortunately, because of the global pandemic, we have not been able to, you know, have uh, the live in-person event. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to next year and hopefully be able to actually meet everyone uh, at the Hyperledger uh, Global Forum. So, for everyone who are joining in for the first time in this virtual experience, uh, definitely do check out what exactly are Hyperledgers. Um, if you are interested in blockchains in uh, blockchain technology or related to solidity or any of those uh, things definitely hyperledger is one of the most uh, brilliant topics to have actually have a look today uh, we are seeing blockchain and the use of hyperledger almost everywhere uh, including you know crypto and uh, all, all of different other but of course like blockchain is not just limited to crypto and uh, it's being used in a lot of different technologies and today we are going to be speaking about one such topic and that is regarding the hyperledger umbra and uh, we are going to be specifically talking about the scaling experiments and how um, you know scaling of experiments within hyperledger umbra is taking place uh, so just a very quick introduction about myself as well i'm shivai i'm currently a production engineer and an open source engineer at layer 5 which is a part of the cncf landscape and I'm also a Linux Foundation mentorship uh, mentor, so like an LFX mentor, and have been mentoring you know a couple of different projects, including Meshri that is part of the CNCF, and also uh, the Solar Foundation projects that are part of the Linux Foundation. And I've also been deeply involved with a lot of different blockchain-related projects. Uh, I have been contributing to a lot of different open source hyperledger programs, and of of course, I've also been uh, an intern at Blocks Lab that is. Uh, and blockchain based uh, system so uh, you can definitely connect with me if you have any uh, questions regarding blockchain or specifically regarding hyperledger umbra now to give us sort of a quick background regarding uh, hyperledger umbra uh, so hyperledger umbra started off as this internship project so uh, as i have also mentioned that i have been a, a linux foundation mentorship mentor uh, so a lot of different hyperledger uh, programs or like sort of internship uh, opportunities come under the lfx mentorship program and umbra actually started off as one of those mentorship programs back in 2018 uh, where um, unfortunately due to some uh, issues with the resources uh, it couldn't be continued but it was officially continued in 2019 and it was also uh, like carried forward in 2020 as well and uh, it was originated uh, in 2019 as a program and essentially it's like an emulation program for different types of hyperledger blockchains and uh, as i said it's already an ongoing project that does help to actually provide a really great research tool to understand how fabrics how hyperledger, uh, hyperledger blockchains actually work and also it helps to understand how they can be used in terms of let's say providing any kind of consensus based algorithms and also understanding the scalability of different types of hyperledger blockchain networks so it's sort of like a simulation platform uh, to provide the comparison between different types of uh, you know hyperledger blockchain networks or platforms and see how they scale up against each other so um, if you are into you know comparing and doing research regarding different types of hyperledger blockchains i'll definitely recommend using hyperledger umbra so in a nutshell, it's sort of an emulation platform for different types of blockchains. And uh, it has support for Python 3.8 above. Now, the specifically, if you talk about how the networking is actually taking place, uh, we are essentially using Mininet and a lot of different Docker containers. So whether it's like uh, you're using, let's say, any kind of a blockchain network, it will be in a Dockerized container. And then we are using uh, gRPC and protocol buffers. And of course, things like Vagrant, VirtualBox, uh, Influx DBS, the database, and Grafana for monitoring uh, the scalability and all. So uh, it sort of combines all of this together under one package. So you can definitely look and have a look at the lab. So essentially, uh, you can check out uh, the Hyperledger labs. And inside of the labs, you'll find the Umbra as well to check out and uh, try to you know 
from uh, sort of perform the experiments on uh, any kind of a blockchain that you can have. So um, as we move uh, in the presentation, we'll be also speaking about the different types of uh, experiments that you can actually do, and uh, we'll be going over a few of those. Uh, you know, in uh, some of the experiments that we'll be discussing. So in a nutshell, essentially. Umbra com encompasses or sort of, you know, has all these different uh, features that are there inside of, you know, when we talk about any kind of a uh, Umbra related uh, experiment that we are going to be conducting. Now, under the hood, that what like, you know, what's powering or what's ongoing inside of um, uh, Umbra is that, of course, like it's been written in Python 3.8. And essentially, uh, the topology that we define is a graph. So if you're not aware of what exactly is a graph, so a graph is um, a data structure that has nodes edges. So essentially, within uh, when we describe the entire network, and we describe the entire experiment, uh, the topology of uh, the Umbra is essentially a graph with its nodes edges. And each component within uh, the Umbra is a microservice. So again, if you're not aware of what exactly is a microservice, a microservice is essentially uh, like, you know, an upgrade over the monolith architectures where each service is its own unique entity. So whether it's like, let's say, a microservice uh, based on the blockchain network, uh, we are going to be having uh, different types of microservices. And each one of the components is a unique microservice within the Umbra landscape. And uh, the gRPC interfaces and protocol buffers are used uh, for each one of these components. And uh, based on these, like, let's say whenever the events are scheduled, uh, we are having, like, let's say repetitions and we are having the intervals being defined. So the most com like the most important aspect to sort of look at when we are looking at under the hood, whenever we are conducting any kind of an Umbra based, uh, like, you know, let's say we're conducting an Umbra based uh, experiment. So the most important thing to sort of keep in mind is that whenever, like, uh, the most important thing to sort of keep in mind is that because we are looking at an hype, like let's say an example is like, let's say we're talking about an hyperledger fabric, right? So in order to understand how the model works, uh, we are defining the topology. And uh, of course, when the topology sort of comes over, we are defining uh, it in terms of a graph and where each of these components is having a unique service and they have a unique function. So that is what is sort of under the hood for uh, fabric, uh, Amra. Now, like to understand how does the Umbra architecture sort of work? So it's sort of defined under like these six different categories, and uh, we'll just go over one of them one by one each uh, on each one of them. So the first one that we have is the Umbra design. So of course, like the design itself is not a component, but essentially it's an API that you could say that allows users to let's say compose experiments for Umbra, right? So if we talk about an experiment within Umbra design since it's an API. So it's designed so that we can have like, let's say a main instance of any kind of a blockchain project as a topology. So it could be a fabric topology. It could be an Iroha topology and like, let's say all the different events that are associated with regards to that topology. Uh, then we have an Umbra scenario. So unlike an Umbra design, uh, it is a proper component that sort of can sort of consumes the mini net APIs that we had described earlier to interact with the topologies that uh, we have defined. So it could be, let's say, con containers, it could be switches, right? And then we have the Umbra broker that sort of consists of, um, it, you could say like it's one of the core components of Umbra and it helps relaying between the messages between different types of components. So if let's say it's like a we have multiple components in a uh, defined in a topology. Uh, we can start with the coordination of the messages between, let's say, uh, the monitoring and uh, to extract, let's say, measurements uh, or information about an environment. Or let's say, if we want to call like a specific SDK that has been defined in the blockchain event. Uh, then we have the Umbra monitor that is sort of defining, let's say, the element uh, that monitors whatever environment that is there. And of course, all the different topological nodes that are out there and uh, it extracts different kind of metrics from them and parses them to you know find out uh, like uh, different kind of metrics and then of course we can influx them into a database like using like let's say influx db and then of course based on these metrics that we are getting we can 
uh, showcase them using visuals using Grafana. And finally, we also do have like uh, Umbra Agent and Umbra CLI. So like, let's say Umbra Agent is specifically designed to understand about any kind of a topology to know if there are any kind of anomalies that are happening within site within the network. So let's say if there has been some kind of high usage in CPU, uh, there's you know some kind of issue with the traffic management. Uh, then ultimately, the Umbra CLI is the component that helps to actually automate uh, the, all the different experiments of Umbra. So this is what uh, we'll be talking about more in terms of when we describe how we are scaling up the experiments. So Umbra CLI is what you're using to you know automate the experiments and uh, do the installation right and uh, make sure that all the different components within Umbra are have been properly installed. So this is one of the most important ones that if you are, uh, you know, trying to create an experiment of your own. So I'll definitely recommend to, you know, go through a lot regarding the Umbra CLI and go through documentations for Umbra CLI to understand that. And then specifically, uh, if we want to, let's say, install Umbra on Ubuntu, right? So these just sort of showcase the steps. So of course, the first step that we have is essentially to, you know, only install Git and the make packages because we are using make files. So we are just installing by using sudo apt install git and make to only install uh, the git and the make packages. And uh, if like, let's say, because uh, we are using Python, so to install all the necessary Python files, those will be provided within the git. So uh, if you go to uh, the official GitHub uh, repository, that is GitHub Hyperlabs Umbra, you'll uh, install when, when you actually do git clone within uh, your local environment, it will uh, automatically install all the different Python packages because those have been already mentioned in the readme file and in the requirements.txt file. And then what we have to do is that because we'll have to install, so uh, you can use the sudo make install. And then uh, we'll be also installing a Vagrant virtual machine and uh, using like a virtual box. So we can install like Vagrant uh, libvirt and also like, let's say you can also use virtual box as well. So we can uh, use both of them, like either one of them. So either the libvirt or like one of the uh, options that is VirtualBox. And uh, once this is done, then of course uh, we need to install uh, some kind of uh, blockchain and fabric based projects. So like uh, currently fabric, uh, currently Umbra supports both fabric and Iroha. So you can install, make install, uh, make install fabric, or let's say make install Iroha if you want to test both of them. And uh, currently like, Umbra also does support Fabric 2.0. So we'll be talking about uh, those as well. Uh, so you can do either of those two, right? And once you have installed them, that is when you can get started with uh, you know the rest of the installation. So these are the main steps to install. And of course, do make sure that you do have Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, that is the latest version, of course. Also, you need to have Python 3.8 installed in your system. So those are the two main requirements, prerequisites that you need to have before you get on and started installing with uh, Umbra. Now, uh, once we have, you know, defined and like this is where now we are sort of, you know, going deeper into uh, understanding how to actually install Umbra and also uh, understand how, you know, the entire workflow works. So before we actually define how the experiment works, I would just want to uh, like, you know, share briefly about how does actually, you know, the entire process is, you know, starting. So of course, as we designed that, you know, the Umbra design comes into the picture, right? So Umbra design as it sort of allows you to compose experiments for Umbra, that is sort of our starting point that we start with. So Umbra design is what we have. Then we define all our topologies, events, right? And finally, then we go on to defining our Umbra CLI that essentially, again, as we have described earlier, that Umbra CLI is, you know, the component that helps start off the experiments in Umbra, right? And it helps us with all the different steps, whether it's the installation, initiation of the components, right? So after we have defined our, uh, after we have defined our topologies, our events, we start off with the Umbra CLI that help us to further call on, let's say the Umbra broker, um, our things like the Umbra scenario, right? And now we define different types of Umbra scenarios that has, uh, you know, uh, like, let's say all of these. So essentially, since we have spoken about how Umbra scenario is being used to uh, define or let's say interact between uh, different instances, you know, because there will be multiple servers. 
and these multiple servers are essentially called as environments and we will be having multiple such kind of environments right and how uh, like how it is being interacting with let's say the monitoring because each one of these different environments we are monitoring these environments to see how you know uh, like different metrics are being shown so we'll be having you can so consider like let's say we initially have uh, one broker now <clears throat> this broker divides into different types of scenarios right and each one of them are being monitored with their own umbra monitoring right or we are monitoring these uh, uh, like you know one by one and of course once this is done we have within inside of the umbra scenario we have different nodes and our network which are being monitored and finally the monitoring sends them across to the database uh, that we use uh, essentially we use influx db and finally we also visualize them so based on this like uh, once we have installed uh, our uh, demonstration like we have basically installed our uh, local system now we can <coughs> execute right we can first once we have installed we can start executing it so essentially amra cli will handle all the different uh, life cycles of the experiment right and uh, when we are designing the experiment environment sort of define you know which particular components are sort of going to be you know be used right or which one which one of these components are actually going to be executed and once we have uh, like whenever we have defined the like we have a designed experiment we sort of save it uh, and load it using the amra cli and amra cli is also responsible to execute the environments and all the different components that we have and of course it will also help us to actually trigger Uh, the execution of the designed experiment right and uh, the broker will then actually help us to actually perform the interactions with the other uh, with the actual with the other uh, components that actually uh, you know come into actually running the experiment so those will actually be part of um, the overall experiment that you know sort of comes up so amra broker will be responsible for that now if we specifically talk about uh, you know actually designing uh, the experiment so that sort of is you know what exactly is how should we actually start designing so uh, essentially we have a certain uh, you know amra design because those help us to actually designing the apis so that helps us to define the different topologies and events and uh, the topologies that can be used are either can be you know like different type of ones that are supported currently by uh, amra that includes fabric topology aroha topology or like indi topology and then that helps us to you know because these topologies are sort of the ground work like that sort of uh, really the ground work they help us to create the abstractions for each one of these blockchain networks that we are defining within amra and that helps us to also you know define all the different artifacts that are uh, desired to run and these are controlled by our different components that we have within amra and uh, the events are essentially all the different interactions that we are going to be having inside of amra and these will be scheduled and of course like these will be having uh, the different parameters like you know uh, repetition of from when till when it will you know from where it will start and when it will start and whether there are intervals within uh, designing of the experiment and uh, finally of course like you know so this after we have defined all of this you can actually run and uh, run experiments right and you can understand how these experiments are working but of course that sort of brings us to our main topic and that is how uh, like you know we can scale up these uh, these experiments so as the slide says that you know hyperledger umbra is really useful for doing network level security fuzzing and also like you know doing network scaling experiments and we have this so uh, sort of seen how you can actually define one of these experiments but the need is to be able to actually you know set up execute and gather data and report uh, you know repeating of the results so that we can actually scale up the experiments at different scales right and see how if we scale up these experiments how it actually affects the characteristics of any kind of a distributed system to you know let's say whether it's related to let's say creation of uh, the blockchain or let's say it's to you know uh, understand how the scalability is actually performing or how much time is it actually taking to you know reach consensus so the important aspect to understand is if uh, you know with, because again the idea is that we can scale up these fabric networks to let's say hundreds and thousands of different nodes so we need to see that whether you know the uh, the scaling like if we do go ahead and scale up these networks because it's definitely possible to do so because uh, there is something that is supported for fabric based networks as well but how would be the effect on when we actually you know 
scale up these uh, different experiments and like what e- e- exact uh, outcome would actually affect the characteristics of the distributed systems that we are running and again the need is to be able to you know develop a mechanism that can actually monitor and actuate uh, the different uh, you know the, the scaling and then of course to be able to run amra on fabric 2.0 plus and uh, to be able to actually scale it to multiple servers right and uh, then also mat- like you know automatically create monitoring functionalities for this scaling up right so if we are scaling up it to multiple servers we should also be have the ability to actually monitor and scale up the monitoring as well so automating the monitoring functionalities and not make it something that you know uh, based on once if you are able to scale up our experiments uh, we should also be able to automatically scale up our monitoring as well and so this was sort of taken up as one of the experiment projects as well and uh, this was sort of the need and of course um, we like of course like what happened was that some of the main deliverables that were part of the project included like you know of course having the scalability functionalities that includes like you know the environments events uh, to be able to scale up those as well and of course having let's say automation functionalities that include like you know having being able to make the make files vagrant umbra cli to actually automatically have you know the automated uh, the automatic functionalities built in then of course having uh, giving the network fuzzing capabilities to hyperledger and of course being able to use umbra for scaling it up to multiple servers so whether it's like you know for testing for setups or let's say syncing with other uh, uh, fuzzing functionalities so uh, as you can see like you know these are some of the major uh, like deliverables that were met and that were part of uh, the overall uh, hyperledger um, you know amras with like specifically when we talk about the scaling of different types of uh, experiments right and essentially the idea is that we are using it for monitoring and seeing how it handles for uh, in in case of a distributed system so these are some of the most important aspects to you know consider when it comes to uh, doing like you know the scaling up so apart from that uh, some of uh, the results that actually took place you know uh, because the learning objectives were to be able to understand how the hyperledger uh, umbra like how it is you know essentially ex- like sort of also understanding right that how we can propose effective experiments to see how the performance varies with the scale of the network so essentially that is also one of the most important uh, things to you know understand that how can we effectively look at different types of experiments and uh, understand how scaling up of these experiments help with the performance as well and then by understanding this we get automatically an understanding of how distributed network applications work and how we can study them inside of hyper uh, ledger based networks and essentially once this was actually completed uh, the further the further plans to you know sort of look at is that we can create more and more experiments that focus on distributed ledger technologies and that will also help us you know enhance uh, the experimentation of hyperledger umbra itself to also have future sets that you know can uh, better enhance the results uh, by sort of using these experiments as a feedback to directly be used within uh, the hyperledger umbra so of course this sort of helps to uh, understand how hyperledger umbra will react and behave in those cases of scaled up uh, hyperledger based environments and uh, this sort of helps you very uh, give a real world experience of you know how uh, those kind of scaled up environments actually can help so um, that sort of uh, brings an end to you know the presentation and i would love to also take up any kind of questions that you might be having uh, and of course you can also connect with me on uh, these uh, you know social platforms on twitter and on linkedin uh, but of course the main idea behind all of these different uh platforms like that we have sort of created why this uh, in turn experiment was gathered in the first place was to be able to you know understand how the scaling uh works in terms of uh, experiments uh, when we are writing any kind of uh, we are defining any kind of a, a experiment within hyperledger umbra how scaling actually affects it and how it can be used to further understand umbra in terms of when we are running it on hyperledger based networks so um the overall e- end experiment it, it's still not 
like you know we could say 100% complete but it does give a clarity on you know how uh, that sort of works out and uh, definitely it's a really wonderful experiment if you are interested in you know simulation and seeing how different kind of networks and if you want to look at their monitoring if you want to look at how they're functioning so i'll definitely recommend at looking at hybrids or umbra and actually running one of the labs as well uh, so we'll take up some of the questions that uh, you might be having so one of the questions that i can see uh, by uh, again uh, don't please don't mind if i uh, take the uh, question uh, like you know the a uh, name as wrong but the question is by pascal uh, and he's asking how does umbra interact with docker and can you deploy nodes as docker containers so essentially uh, like that's first of all a really great uh, you know question and essentially as i've described that all of these different so i'll probably go back you know to uh, describing how uh, in a nutshell how basically umbra is being used in blockchain right so essentially what you can consider is that all of the different uh, like we described about the umbra architecture right so essentially all of these different nodes that we have within like let's say we define a fabric uh, we define a blockchain based network right so it could be let's say uh, we described about two of them right that are currently supported by uh, by uh, by uh, umbra and those include basically both uh, you know Uh, like like everyone or let's say we have uh, you know like fabric or iora projects right so these uh, you could say these blockchain projects themselves do come under uh, like you know inside of these containerized uh, apps right so these themselves are under the uh, container so you can definitely i i'll definitely agree that you know um, that these uh, nodes that we get from these uh, like these blockchain based networks that we are locally installing uh, these are containerized and of course all the different um, you know architecture like within the architecture when we are talking about the different components and uh, you know like all these different components are like deployable as docker containers so that's definitely possible and essentially these uh, whenever we are experimenting with any kind of uh, you know blockchain based um, components whether it's like you know fabric or it's ivory so you can install those dockerized containers and that is how uh, umbra is actually you know interacting with them so i hope like that uh, answers the question and essentially again the thing is that you would also do need uh, you know docker installed in your system uh, so you can refer to docker nodes to understand how and because what happens is that you'll be having these uh, dockerized containers and you'll be you know uh, going getting them through uh, docker hub and these are already available on docker hub as well so you can uh, have a look at docker hub and look at all the different supports that we already have so i hope like that answers the question uh, but if we also want to probably just describe right that how essentially uh, to further sort of point out to the question of uh, you know how it is actually functioning uh, the thing is that like let's say you start off by creating your first ever you know first ever uh, uh, based like let's say you your running the experiment for the first time uh, essentially whenever you are either trying it out for fabric based or let's say you're trying it out for uh, any other kind of uh, you know blockchain based networks you'll be in, uh, you know downloading the docker container and you'll be interacting with that container so i hope that answers the question um like i don't see any other questions so this is sort of summarize uh, if there are no additional questions this is sort of summarize what we have discussed is essentially the main point of you know the experiment or scaling up the experiments is to be able to use uh, you know understand how uh, the hyperledger umbra is being used to understand how these hyperledger based networks work and function and being able to actually use them right uh, to understand how if we scale up these systems right if we scale up these experiments that we are able to design and use within uh, the hyperledger umbra that helps us to actually start off by defining the topologies the events and then finally then you know using them to understand how uh, we can understand uh, right that monitoring them on a database and then uh, using grafana to uh, you know understand how they are sort of scaling up uh, we are using the scaling up to understand how will it actually work in a distributed system and that essentially is you know uh, what is being used uh, anyways i think uh, that sort of is uh, you know 
uh, the overall experiment and uh, thank you so much for connecting and of course uh, you can connect with me on all these different social platforms uh, on twitter and on linkedin and i'll be more than happy to take up any questions uh, during this hyperledger forum uh, on umbra or uh, hype related to hyperledger thank you so much